Hey everybody, well today what I want to do is review all of my winter gear that I use for day hiking. So my day pack and all the other accessories. Stay tuned. Okay, before we get into the rest of the video, I want to remind you to subscribe if you haven't, and uh, like, send it to your friends. Uh, it's important that we share these things with all everyone that can use the information. I'm just here to kind of tell you how I do stuff. Hope it helps out. So the first thing I want to look at is, is what I wear, right? So I got a hat, right? Nice hat to cover my ears so it doesn't get too cold. I have this little um, neck gaiter. A lot of heat escapes from your core through your neck right here. This thing will just if you're really warm sometimes too warm but i bring it along then on the outside i'm going to go from the outside in uh, i just have a light jacket here because when i hike uh, it gets pretty hot so um, i don't want to get too hot and too sweaty so just something light when i start i'm usually a little bit chilly and that's okay because you'll warm up really fast probably within a mile you start shedding layers depending on the train and what you're doing so lightweight jacket on the outside under this, I have layers. So the thing about winter hiking is layers, because um, you'll get too hot or too cold, and so if you just shed, put on, shed, put on, depending on what's going on, uh, it'll keep you at the right temperature all the time. So a uh, light jacket on the outside, and I have this merino wool, um, lightweight, long sleeve shirt, and underneath that is a wicking short sleeve shirt. So what I'm trying to do is, is pull the perspiration from my body into my clothes so that my skin doesn't stay uh, moist. Moist. So my skin doesn't stay wet and because uh, that's what's going to keep you cold and maybe lead to hypothermia and who wants to die from hypothermia today, right? Okay, so my pants. So just regular hiking pants. Um, I have nylon pants on and they, nylon will help, you know, uh, keep the wind off. It's a little bit windproof. And underneath that, I usually have a lightweight long johns, long underwear. Uh, if it's colder, I'll put on a heavier weight long johns. And if it's like really cold, like above alpine level, I'll actually have my windproof pants on, which are pretty heavy. I usually don't wear those unless it's going to get like 50 below with the wind chill or, you know, crazy. If it gets really cold, like really windy and, and nasty outside, I'll pack up my parka. Now, this is a down parka. It's, it's partly down. The rest of it is uh, a synthetic insulation, but it's very warm. This happens to be the Columbia Titanium, but you want to get a jacket that's down and has a hood on it. So if I'm resting, you get cold really fast when you're resting. So you want to put a nice insulated layer on. David's staying warm in this. <laughs> very nice. Yeah, this is very warm. And then I wear uh, my socks, usually a little bit heavier socks. And uh, let's, let's talk about boots here for just a second. So these are weatherproof oboes, um, so they don't, they're not going to breathe as well as um, what I would wear in the summertime, but that's on purpose because I want to keep more of the heat in. If I am going up the alpine level, I have my Scarpa mountaineering boots. These can get pretty pricey depending on what kind of model you get, but they're very well insulated. They're white, very waterproof and they'll keep your feet really warm. Got a nice tread on them. I don't wear these unless it gets really cold. I'm getting an up in the alpine level. As long as we're down by the feet, let's talk about gaiters. Let me demonstrate putting on this leg gaiter. So this is Velcro. Put the strap underneath here. You clip this to the top. Just attach it with the Velcro. There's a clip up on top here. And that's that. Keep, keeps the snow from coming into your boot, which is really helpful when it gets very deep. Now, if you're going to get into very deep snow, you want a set of snowshoes. These are my tubs. These have some really nice binders. Let me just demonstrate this one real quick. Uh, there is a left and a right. Essentially, these straps go on the outside, and that's pretty much universally true with any snowshoe. right in there kick it towards the front 
this in like this. Click it down. And these just go like this. That's that, you're ready to go. So that's how those binders work, they're really nice. Let me show you something else that I use if I'm above alpine level. It's called a boot glove. Again, this will go on the outside. But what this does is it protects you from the wind up there in alpine level. It keeps the keep the wind off your toes so that your feet stay really warm. And they're really simple to do. This is the Velcro strap right here. But you can't walk around with them. You have to put them like in your snowshoes or in your skis. Uh, because there's this really thin layer down here that um, that will wear off pretty easily. That's a boot glove. If you're on popular trails, the snow gets packed, it gets icy. If you're on trails that are near creeks, they get icy. You want to get some nice, you want to get some nice traction. These are, these are called micro spikes. These give you some really nice traction on the, on the ice and snow. Keeps from doing face plants, you know, getting head injuries on rocks and things. And another thing we didn't talk about yet are gloves. I'm just starting out. I'm getting ready. I'll put on these little liner gloves. They just keep my hands warm enough to get all set up. And it gives me the dexterity I need to, you know, tie my boots or zip my zippers or whatever. So I'll put these on. If it gets a little colder, and if it's not too frigid out, I have gloves. I have these nice OR gloves, and again, they're, they're nylon. I can put them with or without the liners. Uh, typically, my hands stay actually colder with the liners in there because there's not enough air in here. It pinches my circulation, pinches my fingers. So I'll wear them without the liners. My hands stay a little bit warmer. So that's nice for kind of, you know, medium cold. Now, when it gets to be really cold outside, like it is a lot of the times where I, where I go. I will get my nice Expedition Marmots. Now these are, these are down, they have a nice leather here. And my hands really start sweating in these pretty quickly. Now you want to be careful not to let your hands sweat too much. When your hands start sweating, take your gloves off. Because, because after a while, that little sweat in here will start to get cold. And you don't want cold hands. If you're one to use trekking poles, I am. <laughs> My black diamonds are nice. Um, these are the Alpine carbon, uh, carbon fiber cork. Nice cork handles on these things. And then I put some bigger baskets on the bottom. And I've taped this up and did all kinds of customized stuff over the years. But these are very durable, very nice. They've lasted me for many, many years. So. So let's get into the day pack. My day pack is the same one that I use in the summertime. They, uh, there are some companies that do make some winter packs that are easy to strap your snowshoes on the back. But I find with just a quick little binder or some, some kind of Velcro strap, this works just fine. And this is, this is an, an older Gregory pack. It's a, like a 35 liter pack, um, works just fine. All right, so let's just dig into this stuff one piece at a time. Um, I carry an extra battery in a plastic bag. The battery pack, just in case my phone dies out there and I need it, I can to recharge it. So that's important. Uh, always a bag of snacks or something when you're eating for the day. I always carry my Garmin emergency device, whatever device that you have. This is a Garmin <coughs> InReach Explorer Plus. Um, and it has a little SOS thing here on the side, in case I get in trouble. It has a GPS in here with maps, so I can figure out where I am and how to get to where I need to be if I need it. Uh, there's a message in here, I can text my wife, let her know that I'm not dead. Uh, so, very useful. I recommend this highly. Um, I always carry some kind of handkerchief, whatever. Sometimes I sit on this, sometimes, you know, when my nose runs, you know, you can use it for a first aid. Um, you know, first aid things, wrap up some wounds or whatever, but I always carry this. There's lots of uses for this. 
And if it gets really cold outside, we'll cover. So this thing, in case it gets windy, you want to protect. One thing I didn't mention was the glasses. So snow can cause snow blindness if you're in the right conditions. I always carry my nice reflective. This, like this, like this, covers up almost my whole face. And if I want to get crazy, I'll get my goggles out and wear my goggles, but not usually on a day hike. Sometimes when I'm above tree line, that's what I'll do. Okay, so let's get inside the pack. Let's talk about this first. So this is one extra layer that I'm going to bring just in case what I'm wearing here just isn't enough. and I run into some unexpected uh, weather. Uh, maybe I injure myself and I need to stay put for a while. I need to stay extra warm. This is a really nice insulator. It, this is a polypropylene. So this is like super warm um, and, it, and it zips up covers me really nice so if you can get something like this do it. this is an old military issue thing but if you can get something like this on a market right um, if it gets super windy this jacket right here really doesn't protect me much from the wind uh, but this this does this is a rain jacket but it's a good uh, outer um, like kind of medium weight outer shell this will keep the wind out it will keep the rain out keep the moisture out has a nice hood covers me up good I've used this when it was like you know, 50 below outside, but it was a few layers on, really good. And this is the, another outdoor research product, so. My Diddy bag. Big fan of the Diddy bag. So here's what we got in here. Lot, lots, of, lots of little stuff I'm gonna go through, so one piece at a time here. I always bring some extra string and a rope and a, a little carabiner. The rope comes in handy for a lot of emergency stuff. If you have to do a splint, you know, make a tarp, you know, that's a nice guidelines for tarps and strings are good for a lot of stuff. Um, this is a repair kit. This is, um, this is tenacious tape. Uh, if you've got to repair in any kind of uh, synthetic clothing or tents, air mattresses, it's really good for that. When all else fails, the old standby compass. Now I have one on my phone. I have one on my GPS. If my batteries go out, if it gets too cold and all the stuff dies, I can get out because I generally know where I am, where I get back to, so. Um, duct tape, fix everything. Um, and fire starters. I, so I have, um, I have a lighter in here, I have some matches, I have cotton balls that are soaked in petroleum jelly. Fire in the winter time is like, save your life a thousand times. Don't forget that. Uh, let see, one last thing in here. I have a whistle. Uh, and it's come in handy a few times to get people's attention. Uh, but if you're in an emergency situation, yelling doesn't always work. This is much louder than yelling. It'll be heard for a long, this is, I think it was called the world's loudest whistle or something like that. I blow it here, but my neighbors would freak out, but it's, it's effective. This emergency blanket, take this with me all the time in, uh, in the winter time. It can be a shelter, it can be a blanket, it can be, you know, a tarp to lay down on. It, this can be a lot of things, so um, and it doesn't cost much. It can be a lifesaver. I have a really small first aid kit. I'm not big on bringing big first aid kits because, you know, you're not going to be able to do much out there anyway. Um, now, you want to protect against blisters, and so I have some uh, Luco tape. It's a super sticky tape, uh, medical tape. You put it on, uh, like, before you get blisters, because you put it on after you get blisters, it'll probably tear your blisters off. It's It's... I know, that's nasty. This is just a small first aid kit. It has a couple of um, um, like band-aids, little gauze pads, um, just a few things. These are my aqua tabs uh, in case my other air, water filtration or in case I run out of water and I can grab it from the creek. You want to purify it. You don't want to get sick from bad water. That's bad news, man. Really bad news. So ibuprofen. When you're talking about use it very often, but so if I get a cut or a scratch, the, the smallest scratch can give you the worst infection. Neosporin will fix that. So anytime you get a scratch and you're going to bandage it up, put Neosporin on it first, it'll keep the badness away. So very important. Emodium. I always carry a couple of Emodiums because if you have bad digestive issues, you need relief fast. <laughs> that helps out quite a bit. So that's basically it for my, for my first aid kit. One thing I forgot. Um, so I have baby wipes that I've dried out. These make really good, you know, compresses if you need them. 
They're super lightweight. Uh, but if you need to wash something, you know, there's a little bit of soap in them. Just get them a little bit wet and it's a great way to clean off a wound. So these are pretty cool. Sometimes nature calls. So here's your little, um, here's your little spade. Where you can dig your cat hole. Never leave your toilet paper out there in the woods. Don't do it. So in this bag, I have my toilet paper, but I also have an extra bag to put my dirty toilet paper and bring it back home with you and throw it away properly. Um, it doesn't dispose very quickly out there. Out there. So, and then a little thing of soap. This is, this is Dr. Bonner's soap. It'll last a really long time. A drop of this is all you need. It goes a long way. And that can be used for first aid. It can be used for general hygiene purposes. But I keep it in this bag for all the obvious reasons. Last but not least is water. All right, you gotta carry water. In this here, I have my bladder and this is an insulated tube. I normally don't recommend this when it gets like, uh, like 10 degrees or colder because these tubes will freeze and there's nothing you can do about it. Even with this insulated tube, they just freeze. So you bring your water bottle with you. You can wrap it in a sock, but make sure it's sealed real well and turn it upside down because the ice is gonna form starting on the top. So if you do it the normal way, your ice will block your water from getting out of your bottle and that's bad news. So you just flip it around and when you wanna take a drink, turn it back upside down, drink it. And all, all the ice is on the bottom then. So um, I have had water inside my pack wrapped in layers of clothes and insulation material still freeze so um, one thing i don't have here are those little hand warmers so if you get those little hand warmers i'll put a picture of them up here um, those are really helpful uh, for when you're out here and they work in emergency you can put them in your glove you can put them in your in your in your, in your boots you can put them you know in your pockets i went through a lot of stuff here uh, some of this you want to bring all the time some of it you don't. Uh, it's this really cold stuff that you really don't need all the time, but it's good to have it uh, for emergencies. So use your dread best judgment, you know, look at the weather report and always expect the unexpected because you never know what's going to happen out there. I appreciate you watching this video and come back for more if you like this. Tell your friends, subscribe, and see you soon. Thanks.